In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the missing angle when you're given parallel lines, you're given triangles, you're given vertical angles, linear pairs. And so let's dive into this lesson. If you want to practice this and kind of check it with the video, take a screenshot or a photo and see if you can fill out the missing angles on your own, and then we'll go through it together. So the first thing to notice is when you see these double arrows here like this, see how these match up? That tells us that these two lines here are parallel lines. So that's kind of a clue or a hint. And then also notice that we have this angle here that's given 120 degrees, this angle that's given 70 degrees, and this angle here that's given 40 degrees. So let's take a look at a couple uh, introductory examples before we dive into this. One thing that you always want to look for when you're doing these types of problems is whenever you see like an X like this, what that tells you is that the angles that are across from each other are going to be congruent. They're going to be equal. We call those vertical angles. So those angles are equal as well as these angles here across from each other are equal. So vertical angles. Another thing you want to be on the lookout for is when you see a straight line, that means that the angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. These are what are called a linear pair. Pair meaning two like a pair of shoes. Linear meaning they form this line right here, 180 degrees. The other thing you want to watch out for is that when you see a triangle, all the angles in a triangle add up to how much? 180 degrees. So if you know two of the angles, you can find the third by you know subtracting that from 180. And then lastly, you want to know a little bit about uh, parallel lines cut by a transversal. So when you have two parallel lines cut by a third line, we call that the transversal. These angles right here are called alternate interior angles. And interior means they're in between the two parallel lines. Alternate means one's on the left, one's on the right. And those two angles are going to be congruent to each other. So we'll see something like that in this diagram. So go ahead and uh, pause the video. See if you can solve this uh, mystery here, this mystery diagram, by finding all the missing angles. And I'll kind of talk through it as I, as I go. So the first thing that I notice is, see this 120 degree angle? If I go diagonally across, see that X that's formed right there? These angles are going to be congruent. So that tells me that angle 9 here is going to be 120 degrees. Okay, and then sometimes what people will do is they'll write them off on the side, but it's good to write it right on the diagram because you might need this angle later to solve for some other angles. So now if I look at this 120 degree angle, angle 5, which is right next to it, see how this forms like a line? So 120 degrees and angle 5, they're going to be a linear pair, meaning they're supplementary or they add up to 180. So 180 minus 120 is going to give us 60 degrees. So let's mark that. Same thing here, you can see we've got that X again where these two lines intersect. These angles that are uh, directly across from each other are going to be vertical angles. So angle 10 would be the same as angle 5. It's going to be 60 degrees. Okay, let's go over to this uh, angle here now. See the 70 degrees. So again, you can see that X. Okay, so the angles across are going to be congruent. They're vertical angles. So angle 6 is going to be the same as 70 degrees. So let's mark that. But these angles that are next to one another that form a straight line, again, a linear pair. So pair meaning two, linear meaning form a line. So 70 degrees plus 110 degrees will give us this 180 degrees, this straight line here. And then you can go back to the vertical angles again. See angle 7 and angle 8 are across from each other. And so angle 8 would be also 110 degrees. So you can kind of see we're, we're making our way through the diagram. Okay, now... Look at what we have here. We've got a triangle. See the angle 3, 6, and 5? See that's a tri meaning 3, angle meaning angle. So three angles, a triangle. All these angles have to add up to how much? 180, right? So 60 plus 70 is 130. 180 minus 130 would be 50 degrees. So that tells us that angle 3 up here is 50, so let's mark that. Now, we can move over here to this uh, angle 1. It's across from angle 3. Again, see that X. These are vertical angles. So if angle 3 is 50, we know that angle 1 is 50. And then notice angle 1 and angle 2. Again, we see that straight line here. I'll see if I can kind of darken it a little bit, okay, like so. So, And then you can see this right here, this ray. But angle 1 and angle 2 have to add up to 180. So 180 minus 50 is going to give us 130 degrees. And then notice that 2 and 4 are vertical angles. They're across from this X here. Okay, so those are going to be congruent. So angle 4 is 130. And you can see we've kind of got the top part of this diagram filled out. So let's keep making our way down here. So now, again, now sometimes what I like to do is to highlight 
with a highlighter, but you can kind of see like this line right here, see that symbol? And then this line right here, see it has the same symbol? That tells us that these two lines are parallel to one another. And then this line right here is what we call a transversal. It transverses or cuts across those two parallel lines. Now, if you notice that this angle here is 70, angle 13 will also be 70 degrees. Those are alternate interior angles. Interior meaning they're in between. So like see eight, the 70 degree, the 13 and 14, they're all in between these two parallel lines. But one's on the right side of the transversal, one side on, is on the left, and those are gonna be congruent. And it's the same thing with angle eight and angle 14. Those are alternate interior, but you can use the linear pair theorem as well. So if this is a 70, then angle 14 has to be 180 minus 70, which is 110. And again, you can see those alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, continuing on, if this is 110, we know that 17 is 110 because 14 and 17 are vertical angles. So let's put that in there. And we know that 13 and 18 are vertical angles. So those are going to be congruent. So let's mark that as 70 degrees. Okay, now notice what we have here. We've got another triangle. See? this triangle right here. And we know all the angles in a triangle add up to how much? 180. So if this is 40, this is 110, that's 150. So 180 minus 150 is gonna be 30 degrees. So that's for angle 19 here. Okay, now let's see what else can we figure out. Well, uh, let's see, we've got this um, larger triangle, see right here, okay, all those angles have to add up to 180. So we've got 30 degrees at this vertex or this angle. We have 50 degrees at this vertex or this angle. So that's 80 degrees. That means that this whole angle right here has to be 100 degrees. So if this is 40, this angle here has to be 60 degrees. Okay, and then what's interesting too, just if you want to note this, see how this is a quadrilateral? So all these angles are going to have to add up to 360, which you can see that's 180, that's 180. Uh, that's 360. Another way you could do this problem as well is that notice that angle 10 and angle 12 are alternate interior angles. See, they're one's on the left, one's on the right. They're in between these two parallel lines. This is the transversal. So there's more than one way to solve this diagram, but you just kind of start with the givens and kind of work your way through. Now, let's look over here. Now, sometimes people will make a mistake. They'll say angle 11 and angle 40 are congruent because they'll think that they're vertical angles. But you see, if you continue this line here, you know, it's, it, these are not vertical angles. It's not forming this X like we showed you up here. You know, so you're not, these are actually not vertical to one another. But when you see a straight line, you see this straight line right here? This angle, this angle, and this angle have to add up to 180 degrees. So a straight angle is a, 180 degrees. So 60 plus 40 is 100. That means that angle 16 here has to be 80 degrees. Okay, so 180 minus 100 is 80. And then now, 15 and 12, here you can see there's two straight intersecting lines. So here, if I continue these lines here, I can see that 12 and 15 are directly across from each other. So that means that angle 15 will be 60 degrees. And then uh, this angle and this angle are gonna be a linear pair as well, since they form the straight line. So if this angle 12 is 60, angle 11 would be 120. Or you could do the alternate interior angles with 9 and 11. So a lot of different ways to approach this diagram. But one thing you want to be careful of is that, you know, oftentimes the diagram is not drawn to scale. So you don't want to just look at it and say, oh, this looks like a right angle. It's 90 degrees. You want to look for uh, the hints like I showed you here. Linear pair, vertical angles, uh, triangle, sum theorem, uh, the parallel lines cut by a transversal. So great job if you're able to follow this uh, video here, Finding Missing Angles. I'll put a link to another video I did talking about how to work with parallel lines cut by a transversal. So go ahead and follow me to that video there. We'll get some more practice, and I'll see you over in that video.